societies establish for themselves a number of different social priorities. These vary from society to society, but some of the more common ones will include, for instance, enhancing public education. Another one would be with improving access to healthcare. Uh, we can think of the promotion of industrial development. Or, for instance, the establishment of a fair taxation system. In the list of social priorities, however, Equality stands almost unparalleled. Equality based on gender, equality based on creed, equality based on class, and even equality based on color or ethnicity. These remain rallying cries across many different societies. The prominence of equality is evident in a number of domestic laws. We see this in various constitutions, whether it be the Canadian or American or South African one, but we also see it across ordinary statutes, such as the Cuban Family Code. But going beyond domestic statutes, we also see, it, see equality being mentioned or promoted in a variety of international treaties. Some of the more common ones are the UN Charter, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, and it, then there are some that are actually more specific of the Convention on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination, the Convention on the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women, and so on. An important implication of equality's prominence, or even equality's popularity, is that it suggests there is some form of consensus around what equality actually means, but also consensus around the virtue in its pursuit. Uh, both of these are largely taken for granted. But what are, in fact, the origins of equality, and how is the concept defined? Equality as a social policy is a rather modern concept. What I mean by this is that historically, many societies were structured around various hierarchical forms. These hierarchical forms were determined largely by status or by birth. Some societies, such as the UK and Saudi Arabia, still are. Historically, much of political and legal philosophy has in fact been dedicated to justifying various forms of discrimination, whether toward women or people who were enslaved or those who practiced a different religion. William Blackstone, for instance, a towering figure within the common law tradition, was perfectly comfortable making the following statement. By marriage, the husband and the wife are one person in the law. The very being and legal existence of the woman is suspended during the marriage, or at least is incorporated into that of her husband, under whose wing and protection she performs everything. Mercantilism, which hastened the end of many forms of feudalism, shifted value away from birthrights and toward perceived merit. No longer were people to be subordinated to the will of a feudal lord. They were, as John Locke asserted, free, equal, and independent. Of course, this first manifestation of liberal equality didn't exactly apply to all, excluding women, black people, non property classes, and many others. Equality was indeed a little peculiar at first, as it perfectly coexisted with other systems of social organization, such as slavery, uh, colonialism. It coexisted alongside misogyny and classism. Even John Locke saw no contradiction between concept of equality and some of the systems of social organization that seem to perpetuate a dominant subordinate relationship. Locke, for instance, spoke of the family as being comprised of a master with all these subordinate relations of wife, children, servants, and slaves. Since then, however, activism, resistance, legislative reform, both on domestic and international scale, have sought to usher in an era of equality before the law. These efforts have been so successful that equality stands not just as a social priority anymore, but also as a core social value. As two scholars assert, one of the basic tenets of almost all contemporary moral and political theories is that humans are essentially equal, of equal worth, and should have this ideal reflected in the economic, social, and political structures of society. In this way, 
both governments and societies must treat individuals with equal consideration, concern, and respect. In short, there is a general belief in the equal worth of all human beings, or what Jeremy Waldron describes as basic equality. Tellingly, this is where consensus peters away. The widespread agreement around an abstract notion of equality, basic equality, is matched only by widespread disagreement over a large range of specific equalities. As John Rawls points out, there appear to be two distinct approaches towards the concept of equality. On one hand, we have equality as it is invoked in connection with the distribution of certain goods. On the other, we have equality as it applies to the respect which is owed to a person irrespective of their social position. So while we may agree that treating people differently just because of a trait such as sex or color is wrong, we do not necessarily agree on the level of intervention required to promote equality between different sexes or ethnicities, particularly if this involves the distribution of or the redistribution of certain goods. This is where equality laws enter the picture, and in the following lesson we will examine some of the foundations to equality laws.